Hi everyone, my name is Karen Damsky, and you might all be wondering about my topic, knitting, and what it might have to do with wellness and the week of wellness that this is being presented for. And I'll just tell you that for me, knitting is all about wellness. When I'm not knitting, I'm usually not well. And it has to do with that extra special thing I give myself when I knit, which is time for me. It allows me time to relax. It allows me time to sometimes move away from people. And it allows me time to connect with people, depending on what I need. It also gives me a chance to meditate. And any of you that already know about knitting will know these things, although may not always allow yourself the luxury or the time to give yourself. I know many knitters who talk to me about how guilty they feel when they knit or that they should be doing something else or that um, they could be reading a book. And I always tell them that, yes, that's true. You could be doing all those things. But sometimes you need to do something that just feeds you. And there's nothing better than having stitches on the needle and watch fabric flow from those stitches. For me, I find it extremely connecting. I have used it in times of happiness. I've used it in times of grief. And I find that in all of those instances, it brings me a different kind of pleasure, a different kind of resolution. And it kind of depends on where I am as to how the knitting of stitches or the knitting together of yarn or how, whatever you want to call it, what that product produces. And I know many people feel that when they knit, they have to finish something, they have to make something, it has to be something. And I think that in our lives, we're very geared to that. We're always geared to result. We're not always as geared to process. And knitting is a process. I find it a spiritual process and I find it a meditative process, but I also find it a process that in the end usually does get me something. It isn't always what it started out to be. And even though I make a great plan many times for what I want it to be, that doesn't mean that that's always what I get. So to back up a little bit, I want to talk about knitting and how it comes into your life. It has a way of connecting with people who are looking for something like this to connect with. So no, knitting isn't for everyone. There are people who pick up the needles and spend maybe an hour learning, maybe they spend three weeks learning and they decide this isn't for me. But the people that really do enjoy it get a great deal from it. And I wanna bring that activity, that, that space to as many of you who would like to try to do it. And so I am going to offer on our website a chance to do a beginning knit along where you can learn the basics of knitting. And in addition, we're going to offer an, a project that expands into something greater. And as you do these projects, I think you'll find that you get a sort of awareness of self. Now, I've talked to many of my clients about knitting as journaling, and I was thinking about that today. And I was thinking about what are the times in my life where I can really say that I'm journaling? And what came to me is that during this COVID pandemic that we're all going through, many, many people are dragging out projects that have been in the back of their closets, under the bed, in the bin, in the garage. And as they drag them out, they call me and they tell me, Karen, Remember that red sweater I started in 2004? Well, I dug it out and I really want to start it again. And I realized that as we're talking, we go back to 2004 and we have a discussion about what was going on then. And I find that this process always works too when I'm actually knitting. So for instance, when my mom passed away, I was knitting on a sweater for her. And I found it very difficult to continue to knit on that sweater. It was, it was just too close, my grief was too strong, and I needed to heal some before I could go back to that. Now it was very hard for me to knit on anything because at that time, my mom was my greatest knitting recipient. She was somebody who loved what I did, no matter what it was, always received it gracefully 
and wore it. Whether it was ugly, whether it fit, whatever it was, she wore it and she wore it proudly. But what did happen was a couple of years later, I went back to a couple of projects that I had been working on for her and I was able to resume on them. And as I was knitting, I was thinking of her and I was thinking of different times and it brought up all sorts of memories, which this is what knitting does. It, it connects you. There is a story that goes with it. When you're knitting for someone, you tell yourself a story. You think about them. You think about how they're going to like it, what colors they like, where they're going to wear it. And this holds true of whether you do a blanket or a square. And maybe that square isn't for anybody. Maybe that blanket isn't for anybody. Maybe it's just for you. But I do find that when I'm knitting for myself, I still connect with me. And like rosary beads, like worry beads, knitting is a, ryth a rhythmic process. So you're sliding stitches from one needle to the other. But everybody grieves in a different way and everybody uses different things to either access that grief or to stay away from it. I find that actually many of the handcrafts are good for this. Needlepoint can do it, knitting does it, but knitting is a more age old kind of craft. I like to call it an art form, but it, but it is a craft and it's been handed down through the ages. And most people that I know who learn to knit have learned to knit from an aunt or a grandmother or a mom. Usually it skips a generation. So the moms usually aren't that good at teaching the daughters or the sons. And it was interesting, I found an article in the paper the other day that was talking about knitting during the 1918 pandemic and how they were keeping everyone busy in the schools and they had them knitting on projects, boys, girls, everyone. And that's the other beautiful thing about knitting. It knows no gender, it knows no nationality, it knows no religion, it doesn't care about what gender you are. It, it's just wonderful. And I'm trying to share with all of you that feeling that's so wonderful about knitting and the connection of knitting. As you get to explore knitting, that you let yourself into it and that you allow yourself whatever feelings come up from it and that you enjoy it, that you embrace it. And one of the things that I've found is that when I'm grieving or when I'm sad or when I'm missing someone, if I'm knitting and I'm knitting on something simple, something like this, which is just straight knitting, this puts me in touch with all of my grief, with anything, because my mind is totally free. There's no outside influence because I don't have to think about what I'm doing. I'm not focused on anything else. I'm focused on me and wherever my mind wants to take me, which is like a meditation. Sometimes when you meditate, you go off into places unknown and sometimes you zero right in on a problem and you chew on it in that meditation until you work it out. Knitting is kind of that way. If I want to avoid thinking about something, if I'm just tired of thinking about my mom who died or my grandfather who I miss very greatly or somebody dear, a dear friend. We recently had someone that we lost in our store to the COVID virus. And for a few days, I was really taken up by it. I, I had to knit on things that were very intricate because I, I didn't want to think about her. And so then you get into something like this, which is a cable. And this square and this square, they can match, they can be put together and they can be made into something larger. But both of them have value. With that said, you can go on to a bigger piece. And this is sort of a combination of, of the grief process. You get to go six rows where you don't have to think of anything other than you have to keep the cadence of counting to six. But like worry beads, like rosaries, anything that allows you cadence, it's rhythmic and it kind of flows through. Now, every once in a while, you'll find that you'll go over six and go to seven and then you have to rip back. But this one just requires that you go six rows of what's called stockinette, knit a row, purl a row, knit a row, purl a row. And then at one moment you stop and you do, you do purl a row and then you purl a row again and then you knit a row, purl a row. Anyway not so much of interest to a non-knitter, but as you get into it, it's kind of wonderful. This also can become a square. And this square could join with these squares. And these become sort of a journal for you. With this one, 
and this one together, you have sort of a tapestry of where your grief is going, where your process is going. And you can look at it and know that on one day, you were really connected to it and wanted to think about it. And on another day, you didn't. And 10 years from now, when you look at this piece, you'll see all of that, but you'll see it in a whole different way because now it's a combination of everything that's been going on with you. And so I hope that many of you will take this up. I hope that those of you that have already taken it up will join us and go on this journey with us and see what happens because I find it to be extremely healing. And I understand about death and I understand grief and I know how hard it can be to experience and to under and to have anyone understand you and that's the other thing about knitting you can do it alone i do it alone a lot i in fact i find that it allows me time to be alone with me and i can do it with other people because when i'm mindless if i don't want to think about anything i go back to this square and i can sit and talk to anyone and knit on this and and i've got a connection with them and we've forged a bond so again i'm hope that many of you will take part. The name of my stores, which I don't think I mentioned in the beginning, is our L'Italier. There's one in Encino and there's one in Redondo Beach, both in California. Anyway, I thank you for allowing me the time to share with you the thing that I love the most. Well, not the most, I love a lot of things more, but I, the, the, I think that it is, sort of an expression of my life. And so I enjoy sharing that with you. Thank you for your time.